Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by, welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links, you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Today I am bringing to you another face mask. Now this is not one that you have to pay for. This is one that you can make very easily without a pattern. Now this is not my design. This is a design that I ran across. Seeing how I had never done face masks before the first one that I did and I really just kind of wanted to get my hands on one because I felt like I needed one. I didn't know all the different masks that were out there and so I've kind of done a few and tested them and I found what I like and what I don't like and what I'm comfortable with and what I'm not comfortable with. And so today's mask is one that I like but I tweaked it a bit because there were things with face masks that I just wasn't liking. And I'm not liking the top that it doesn't mold to your nose like the surgical masks. I don't like that it's open and you've got that gap up there. And so I just kind of kept racking my brain. How could I make it so it molds to my nose and it sets closer to my face and there's not a gap? Even when you pull it behind your ears nice and snug, there's still that gap there. And I wanted to, I guess, get rid of that. And so I think that I've come up with a pretty cool way to do that, one that works, one that I'm happy with, and I'm gonna be showing you what I'm using as a filter, an added filter inside of my mask. Now, this is a disclosure, so hopefully you're not fast forwarding past this part and you're hearing when I say that this is not an FDA approved mask or a CDC approved mask, this is a face covering for added barrier or protection. I'm not asking you to make this mask and go out and do surgery or go out and take care of sick people. I'm just showing you how to make a mask for yourself that is very budget friendly without a pattern that you can use for added protection and an added barrier. And you see these that people are making them all over the news and I'm one of those people that when I do something, I do it until I get it the way I like it. And I have finally found a mask that I am 150% happy with and I wanted to share it with you. I'll also be bringing to you a quick, easy bonus mask that I saw on the news the other day. So for those of you who don't wanna sew, I've got an easy, quick mask that I'm gonna show you today that it, again is not my idea, but I loved the idea. And I think that it is really using items that just about everybody probably has on hand already. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into it and let me show you just how easy it is to add a wire to your mask so it will form to your nose and sit tightly on your face. I love this mask. Alrighty, so getting started. The fabric that I'm gonna use today is this Emma and Myla fabric that you may have seen me use in some of my Easter DIYs this year and a pink coordinating flannel that I actually had on hand. Now I'm using the flannel because I don't have much of this fabric left and I really wanted to make a few masks using it. And so I thought that I would make the front of it with this adorable fabric and the back with the pink coordinating flannel. Now this can be very easily a reversible face mask if you want it to be. So choose two of your favorite fabrics and get creative. And when you place this, you're gonna place your good side up and your good side down. Did I do that right? Oh, good side down, there we go, goes this way. So when you flip it over, you've got the bad side, the wrong side on each piece of fabric. I'm also using another cream flannel that I picked up, and I'm gonna kinda use this as a second barrier just to thicken up the mask just a bit. And this piece measures out at nine inches wide by four and three quarter inches long. I didn't go the full length of the mask just because I didn't get a lot of the 
flannel and so I wanted to uh, just kind of make it go as far as I could. I decided to go just a bit farther and I thought that for an extra filter, I would add a fabric sheet. I thought that it wouldn't hurt and if it doesn't work, then at least my face covering will smell really good. And so I just took one and it works perfectly, the size, when you unfold it, it's the perfect size, it's nine inches wide. And then I just kind of took and folded it to the size of the flannel there in the center. And this is how we're gonna sew this together, but we're not gonna sew it together just yet. I'll also be using two pieces of white elastic. This is quarter inch elastic that I had in my stash. Any size elastic will do. So if you don't have elastic, a great alternative would be to use the brown rubber rubber bands and maybe tie them together real good to get the length that you need or even just some string. And I'll show you how I did it with string at the end of this video. You'll need two pieces of elastic that measure out at seven inches. That's a good size. Now, before we get to putting this together, the last piece of fabric that you're gonna need, and I'm just using the flannel because it's what I have on hand, and it was a scrap and it was gonna work perfect. You're gonna need a piece of fabric that measures out at six inches long by one and a half inches wide here. Now taking this six by one and a half inch piece of flannel, I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna iron it. Just to kind of crease it so it'll stay folded in half. And I will be using some pipe cleaner to mold it around my nose. This is perfect. It's no thicker, no thinner than what is used in the surgical masks. And so this is gonna work perfectly. One 12 inch piece of pipe cleaner is gonna give you two wires for two different masks. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. And I'm gonna place my pipe cleaner sandwiched in between the flannel here. When you're looking at your fabric, you've got your fabric placed the way you want it to be. So when you're wearing it, the pattern is correct. So on this side here, I know that this is gonna be the top part where my nose goes. So this is where I am going to place my wire. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this into place because we don't want it to move. And you wanna just kinda of center it there at the top. It doesn't need to go the full length of your fabric. And there's no need for perfection when doing this. You just really want all your edges to line up. And so I'm not much of a pinner, but when it comes to this part, I think pinning is probably a good idea because I want it to stay in place. And we are ready to sew. So I'm gonna make sure that my fabric sheet is in there. Now, if you don't wanna add this and you think it's silly, don't add it. Maybe I am being silly, I don't know. But it makes me feel a little bit more protected right now. And that seems to be uh, the story of my life right now. I was just kinda trying to keep everybody protected. Now, when we start to sew this, we've got the middle we're not gonna start in the middle. We're gonna start just a bit off the middle because we need to leave an opening to turn it right side in or right side out. Didn't I do that in the last video? And you wanna do a back stitch. And I'm just going about, giving it about a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. Now I've stopped with my needle down with about an inch from the needle to the end of the fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and keep my needle down, lift up my foot, and I'm doing this one-handed, guys, holding my phone in one and this the other. I'm gonna separate these two fabrics here, and I'm gonna fold this back. I'm gonna take my elastic, and it's gonna go in between the two fabrics and I'm gonna put it at an angle right at the corner here, just like so. And then 
I'm gonna go ahead and fold my fabric back down over it. I'm gonna place my foot back down. Now when I sew this, I'm gonna do a back stitch on this just to reinforce where the elastic is because there will be tension on that when we're putting it behind our ear. Now when you come to the end, it's easier if you end with your needle down and you lift up your foot just to keep it in place and then you can rotate your fabric so you can sew the next side here. And so we're gonna go ahead and sew this next side and we're gonna stop with our foot down right about here to attach the elastic. So we're at the end here. You're gonna wanna be careful. We're gonna have to undo one of these needles. I wasn't thinking. And we're gonna fish out that elastic piece. There it is. And we're gonna pull that to the corner. And we're gonna place this in the corner, place down our fabric and just sew over the corner. Now, if you see that your fabric is starting to gather a little bit, it's only because the elastic is kind of pulling the fabric together. That's okay, it's normal. Don't worry about it, just keep going. Again, we're at the end, lift up my foot. I'm gonna rotate. Now this is the side with, woo, the wire in it. So we're just gonna go right along the side here and the wire, you want it to be down where the crease is, sandwiched in there. Just like sewn, we're gonna sew all the way across. And when we reach to the other end here, right here, we're gonna stop again with our needle down and we're gonna put in our second piece of elastic that's gonna go from this corner over to this corner. So this is what you should be left with. We've got our wire here at the top. We've got our fabric sheet, the flannel, and here at the bottom, we've got the opening. We're gonna go ahead and turn this right side out. And then you'll see your elastic here and you can go ahead and pull on your elastics to kind of help straighten it out a bit. I like to make mine nice and neat, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run over it with the iron. It's gonna make the next step a lot easier. And it makes it easier if you kind of tuck in this bottom part that's open Go ahead and run over that too with the iron. Kind of keeps it in place. Alrighty, so all that's left to do now is I eyeball this. I don't measure. I just kind of go about a third of the way on both sides and I'm gonna fold it up just like that, kind of accordion fold it. And I'm gonna run over it with the iron again and if you wanna pin it, just to keep it in place, you can. There we go, that's nice. I'm happy with that. And then the best thing to do is just to kinda of run over where we pleated it with the iron. Now when we sew this, I'm gonna start on this end and I'm gonna go across, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna go across. I'm not gonna go back across this way because the wire is up here. So I'm just gonna sew down on three edges, which is gonna sew down these and it's gonna close up our bottom here.
And there we have it. Look at that. We've just made a super easy to do face mask. And what I love about this is that it's got the wire here that's gonna bend and mold to your nose. Now, if the elastic is a bit too big for you, I like to kind of keep it a universal size and do the seven inches because maybe, you know, it'll fit Jeff, whatever size, not that he's gonna wanna wear this one. But if you find that it's a bit too big, just take your elastic, don't cut it, kind of pull it, wrap it around your finger, kind of tie a knot, if you will. But when you pull it, you want it to go real close to the end there. And that will just tighten it up just a bit. And that's what I do for Kayla and I, is I tie it like that and it fits us a lot snugger. Um, and I just do that a universal seven inches for all the masks that I've made and I've donated as well. I've just stuck with the seven inches and just told people just to tie it if it's a bit too tight or too loose. I wanted to show you one that I did with string. This one doesn't have the wire in it because it was one that I had done earlier before I thought of using the pipe cleaner in here. But it is using the string and not elastic. This is a thinner ribbon. And what I did was I placed it on my face. I held it to my face and then just kind of wrapped it around my ear, the string to see how long I wanted it. And then I went ahead and I just tied it off in a knot and I did that on both sides. And this is one that fits me nicely. This one fits very snugly. Just make sure that when you do add the string that you do it a bit on the longer side to give you enough allowance to tie the knot. Or you can make it so you tie it around your head if you wanted to. It really is up to you. Um, I like it going around my ears, but there's some, I know a lot of nurses really like just to be able to tie it around their surgical cap. And so, yeah. I would start with folding your bandana in half and then take the two sides, fold them down and then you want to fold the bottom up over it because this is the part that you want to be able to move to adjust how much coverage you have on your face, if that makes any sense. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take either two rubber bands. A lot of us have these on hand already, or you're going to use some rubber rubber bands. It really is up to you. And you're going to place it through the end. I thought that this was just such a clever idea. Now you're gonna have to adjust this to size. So you may have to work with it a little bit, but once you get it adjusted and you place your pieces here, you're gonna go ahead and fold these over and pull this and go ahead and tuck this in. Just like so. And here you have got a face covering and you can adjust it just by pulling down the bandana there at the bottom to adjust it to have full coverage of your nose and your mouth. And you just go ahead and tuck this behind your ears. If you don't have a bandana and you have some extra fabric, I had this fun fabric. And so Jeff told me just to go ahead and make him one like this that he could throw in his truck. So again, I'm gonna fold the fabric down. I'm gonna fold it over. And for this one, I'll use the rubber bands. So this can very easily be done like I'm doing it here with fabric and it's a no sew face covering and it works perfectly. Here, I'm gonna use this one as a guide as to where my rubber bands need to be. And don't worry too much if this doesn't stay in there, your fabric. It's not gonna hurt anything because it's gonna be pressed up against your face, so it's not like it's gonna slide around. Super quick and easy face masks that I absolutely love. I think that these are great for those who don't have a sewing machine and don't wanna sew. If you have an old t-shirt, you can use an old t-shirt, an old towel maybe if you wanted to. 
and I just think that these are super quick and easy to do and I think that this is my new favorite mask just because of the way it can mold to my nose and I don't have that space there. Now how quick and easy were those last two masks? It doesn't get any easier than that and if I'm repeating myself get creative use clothes that you're not wearing anymore maybe clothes that you were going to donate that you could maybe cut up and make a face covering with it'll work okay the last time i did this you all wanted to know why i didn't model the masks today i'm going to so i'll start off with the two quick and easy ones that i just made for you gotta take my glasses off for this one and so we'll start off with the bandana here and so let me just tuck that in and i made this one to suit my face size. And so just by there, you have got a face covering that is muffled, but nonetheless, you've got one and it works and it's covering the nose and your mouth and it's perfect. It's going to do its job. And what's great about this is you can just take it apart and wash it so easily. Here is the one that we just made together that has the wire in it. So I'm going to go ahead, I tied the sides of it. I'm going to open it up and then here on the top, you're going to see that I'm going to bend it down onto my face. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? There is no gap here. The wire is formed right in there up against my nose. And I love it. And can I just tell you, this smells so stinking good. I love that the fabric sheet is in there because it smells amazing. It makes them a bit stiffer, but I don't really mind that. I think it'll loosen up with time. And so that's okay. Um, yeah, this is amazing. I love how there's no gap there now. And so I am 100% happy with this. I made a ton of these and you can see here how um, it molded to my nose and it's going to stay molded. And so I really, really like that a lot. I love that I can do that now. This one here is the one that I made with the ribbon because I didn't have elastic. And so, like I said, I just kind of put it on my face and held it. And then I took the ribbon and pinched it tight, pulled it off and then tied it in a knot. And I did that on both sides. And so ribbon works just as well. And then we open that up and see, and this is what I didn't like was this gap here that you get with the face masks. There's this gap, and even though it's guarding you, I just wanted something that was gonna pinch down onto my nose. And this is definitely better than nothing, but I am a perfectionist, and so I needed that problem solved. And so now I can huge, huge difference in my book. No gap, the wire's in there, and we are good to go. Now, when you're washing these masks, it really is to each his own, what you're comfortable with. Uh, the ones that have the fabric sheet and the wires in, I am hand washing with a laundry soap. And um, I'm just being gentle with it and I'm hanging it to dry. If you want one that doesn't have the fabric sheet that you can just throw into the wash machine and wash, then I would definitely probably leave the fabric sheet out and just use a couple layers of flannel inside just for a thicker mask. And then that way you can just throw this in the washer if that's what you want to do. Can you tell by my demeanor today, I feel like a hundred pound weight has been lifted off of my shoulders. Although we have not yet received Ray's test results, which is super frustrating. It's five days later from the day that he tested, which was last Sunday. Ray is sounding better than he has sounded in three weeks. We are on 
I believe day 15 or 16 of Ray being sick and I tell you he is up right now he is showering and I can hear the music on in the bathroom I don't think I've ever been so happy to hear music playing while he's showering in my life up until now you know he's just kind of taken these showers and he's went right back to bed and so the fact that I'm hearing his music it's just music to my ears. My son is fighting this. He is going to beat this and, or he has beat this. And oh boy, do I feel relieved because there are so many people out there that have not beat this. And my heart aches and hurts and it just leaves me with a heavy heart. And so really I have to say Thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you who have been praying for us because, oh my word, I feel it. I feel that God's miracle and God's arms were around Ray and I am not one who really talks too spiritually on my channel, but I needed it right now and I think I was feeling weaker than I have ever felt in my life. Really, I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you subscribers for all of the love, your thoughts, your prayers to us because it helped immensely. And it lifted me up and it gave me strength and it gave me a mindset, I think, to think more positively. There were some pretty amazing uh, comments that I've received over the last few days that really, made me feel like, wow, Kelly, you need to change your thought process right now. You need to change the way you're thinking. And you, oh boy, yeah. Hold on, Ray's calling. What's up, son? Are you okay? Yeah, turn it off. So are you gonna try and go online and uh, Jeff said it wasn't email, that he had to go online. I checked her out this morning. This morning? Yeah. I think you should try to call your doctor. Okay, I am back. He wanted pepperoni pizza and a Diet Coke. Ah, I'm happy. I am so grateful. And so like I said, I just want to thank each and every one of you. Just know that you all have made me feel loved and uplifted and I felt it. I really truly felt it and I needed it. And so thank you to my YouTube family because honestly, I, this is not a joke. I could not have gotten through this without you. And so your comments were just so there, so uplifting and just show, so reassuring. And that was something that I definitely needed. And so thank you, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and found it useful and if that was something that you you know were kind of worried about not being able to mold it to your nose problem solved I I'm happy with it and I hope you are too so please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below they not only lifted my spirits over the last week but they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you stay safe, happy, healthy, and positive, and bye for now.